The name of the fort, which Roy Bates claimed as his own, was Ruff's Tower, one of seven forts built to defend the Thames estuary during the last war. Two were demolished after the war, four remain derelict, and Ruff's Tower, or Sealand, is alone inhabited. Sealand, said Bates, would make him a fortune. Quite how has never been clear, and the nearer you get to the Principality, the more unlikely it all seems. But then, that's their problem. Yours is just getting there. The platform on its massive pillars is 65 feet above the waves. Trespassers are not welcome, and boats have been fired on by the Bateses in the past. It's all very well declaring independence, but you have to be prepared to defend that independence, as every emergent country knows. Roy Bates, the Prince of Sealand, has had to do this in the past and is prepared, if necessary, to do it again. And frankly, one wonders why he's gone to all the trouble. Because without the assistance of the royal winch pulling one up, it would be pretty difficult to just drop in. Though that's almost what they expect friends to do. The Bates family, yes, Mrs. Bates and son Michael are there too, see nothing odd in living on a lump of concrete and steel in the middle of the North Sea. Daughter Penny, usually there too, was absent having a spell on the mainland. Until you get the hang of the layout, you wonder where the family can live. But these forts were built to house 200 men. The two massive legs are hollow, and there are seven floors to each leg. Some of the rooms are below the sea. The independent sovereign state of Sealand, half ship, half fort. The press gave Roy Bates the title Prince of Sealand and have had an amount of fun at his expense. Do such jibes annoy him? Not at all, no. As, as a matter of fact, uh, I can understand this. But uh, princes, dukes and lords are not very democratic, you know. Uh, originally, somebody grabbed something, and from then on, they're a prince, or they're a duke, or they're a lord, or their descendants are. No, they're not elected democratically. But the decision to grab rough stars was entirely democratic. Joan and Roy Bates have been married for 21 years, and all decisions are fully discussed. Mrs. Bates, how is it possible to um, you know, keep looking glamorous in conditions like these? It's no more difficult than anywhere else in the world. We're quite comfortable here. We have all the things I want. Look, makeups, brushes and things. Well, is there anything you very much miss? Yes, I miss a hairdresser. It's the one luxury I do miss. I, when I go back to England, I like to go to the hairdressers first, you know. It's something about having it done for you. Mm. Is it true that you sleep with a pistol underneath your pillow? Uh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. If the uninvited did land, would you use that pistol? If I had to, yes, quite definitely. Could I see the pistol? <laughs> yeah, I'd rather you didn't touch it. It's got one up the spout. In that case, I certainly won't. Would you, would you show it to me? <laughs> yes, certainly. Do you have any recourse in law if another Roy Bates turned up here um, while you were away for a swim or whatever it was and simply took over Sealand? Do you have any recourse against him? No, no uh, state has any recourse uh, except under its own law. If there's a coup d'etat or hmm. a takeover, that's just their hard luck. If you got into trouble in any way, I mean, whether it was being attacked or somebody else trying to seize Sealand, you wouldn't be able to call upon Great Britain for assistance. We haven't got a treaty, if that's what you mean, a mutual defence treaty. Um, so we're on our own. Apart from uh, sheer cussedness and, and, and a lot of guts, what's the point of hanging on at Sealand? I mean, what are the sort of things that you could do? Well, every state has to pay its way. And every state does this by its own enterprises and the licenses that it issues to some of these enterprises. The sort of things which we can do as an independent something is international banking, um, international lotteries. We have been propositioned a number of times for radio and television. We've turned them down. Um, it is things of this caliber. Uh, country registration is, is a. I have a lot of 
companies now who have applied to me already for registration with me. Uh, we're not ready for it yet. Uh, it is this sort of thing which gives you the revenue. Large words, but then Roy Bates was making the same claims three years ago. It just doesn't seem to have happened. What it costs to run Sealand, Roy Bates won't say. But with all supplies coming by tug and helicopter and thirsty generators to feed, it must be considerable. The only apparent source of income, Sealand stamps, of some interest to a collector, but mail carrying them can only be posted in Belgium by special arrangement. Food, a different fish every day in season, and this apart from supplies bought out fairly regularly by tug. They're normally all right for food, but the family remember the early days, when once or twice it was porridge for breakfast, porridge for lunch, uh, porridge for dinner, and porridge biscuits. What does Mrs. Bates miss most? A kitchen sink. But that's not all that's missing from Sealand. There is no ship to shore wireless and no communication with the mainland. In an emergency, they rely on more primitive means of communication. Do you think, as a result of Sealand, you are going to be a very rich man? I don't think one does anything for the purpose of money in, in mind just as coldly as this. Uh, you set out to do something, and if in the, in the way of doing it money is earned, this is part of it. So it's the idea of doing it that appeals to you rather than the sort of cash? I, I mean, you I like a challenge. This is a very difficult question. Uh, as a businessman, I should say it's the cash. As a, as a man, I must say it is the idea. What do you like most? What has given you the greatest pleasure about this whole um, adventure? The challenge. It had to be the challenge. So it's departure time for all those not staying. And you go the way the supplies came. By winch and tug. Mainland, here we come. Roy Bates's dreams may or may not come true, but if you find it hard to accept that that lump of steel and concrete now lost in the mist is an independent sovereign state, well, try getting back from there without one of these, an up-to-date British passport. Because if you don't believe that that is foreign soil, there are gentlemen on the mainland from Her Majesty's Customs and Excise who are in no doubt at all.